So let me ask you this evening, do we focus on God? Is our mind focused on Him? Do we expect God to show up in our circumstances when we bring others to Him? This evening, we're going to be in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2, as we get started. And uh, it's good to see you all here this evening. That's wonderful. I am an interesting kind of fella. I've always, many people would confirm that, but uh, I grew up working uh, a secular job, working in construction, and I love work. I love how that all happens and, and businesses, and I love people. I love getting to figure out people. I don't know if you're like that or if I'm just weird, but I like to figure out how people work. And I read some things not too long ago that talks about churches and how churches work and, and congregation size and all that. And they said that when a congregation is 80% full, people feel like they're starting to get a little crowded, right? It's like, oh, I don't know, it's getting kind of tight in here. And then since COVID, that changed to about 60%. And I found, found that very interesting, how people don't want to be close to people. And, and, and I kind of understand that. Yet the problem with churches right now necessarily isn't uh, um, to do with the fact that they're, um, what is going on there possibly or how, uh, how empty they are possibly, but rather this stat is dealing with people's comfort zones, okay? And we understand that. Some people have a bubble and, and they say, please stay away. I have my space here and I don't want you to get inside that bubble. And, and I understand that. But uh, some people, when we come to church, sometimes we, we look around, right? We're trying to look for our seat. And sometimes we say, oh, sister so-and-so is here and, and her perfume, it stinks, right? She, she's always got a lot of perfume on and I don't want to sit over there. Or brother so-and-so is here and I wish he would wear more, right? Maybe, maybe he smells a little bit. Or, oh, I can't sit over near this person. I'm not pointing over here for any reason. But um, that person, they cannot sing Maybe they can't hold a tune in a, in a bucket, and i got to sit somewhere else if I'm going to concentrate while I'm singing. And it's interesting how that works sometimes in our mind, yet it's odd sometimes, isn't it? We, we, we don't mind being at certain events where we're crowded. Maybe it's a, for me, it would be the Leafs game, right? Now, I, we haven't had to worry about a playoff game in a while, but sometimes when you go to a stadium, you like to be crowded in and, and cheering for peop with people in the same way. Or during a Black Friday event, we find that that's okay. But when it comes to church, it's different, isn't it? Hmm. And I wonder why that is. Uh, why at church it's a different? Often it's not the, pop, the population that's not the factor here, like how close I am to my neighbor, but the possession or whose church it is and, and what we're doing here, or rather what's happening there at the church. And because we want to be there, there's an anticipation. Uh, I remember so often as a kid being so excited and still obviously knowing that Sunday is coming and preparing and getting ready and shining my shoes and, and getting so excited to see what the Lord would do there and my friends that are all pulling in the same direction and those people that are, you know, of the same heart and excited to be there. So there was an anticipation and I hope tonight you came to church with an anticipation. I hope you came excited, ready to hear something from the Word of God and, and to see what God would do here. And today, as I said, I want to turn to this passage of Scripture, Mark chapter 2, and I pray that the message this afternoon, this evening, would be a help as we understand what's going on in this passage and how we can relate it to our involvement in world missions. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer before we pray this evening. God, our Father, we thank you again for the opportunity we have to come together. And as I pray, Lord, this evening that as we dive into this passage of Scripture, you would compel us to do more for the cause of Christ. Lord, we thank you for this portion. We give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12 says this, And again he entered into Capernaum. And after some days it was noise abroad that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together through... Uh, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Pause there for a second. Have you ever been in this type of a situation where, where the church is just packed with people and, and everybody wants to hear what is going on there? I have. I was in Kenya one time on a missions trip and, and we were building an orphanage at this place. And 
as happens, uh, we invited people out to church. Now, this was my first time in Kenya, first time in a different country, and I didn't know what to expect. Uh, the pastor talked about the fact that we'd be showing a Jesus film, and, and we really hadn't been involved in that village uh, so much, and, and I didn't know what to expect. Now, as you're probably familiar, in other cultures, sometimes even though the church is supposed to start at, say, 7 o'clock, sometimes people don't show up on time, do they? So we were, we were sitting there. This is my first time out of country, and I said, oh, no, it's 7 o'clock. What is going to happen? There's nobody here. I mean, there was like 10 people there, right? But that was our group. That's who came down to help. And I thought, what is going to happen? So we waited a little longer and eventually the pastor got started and, and a few people trickled in. I thought, oh, what a failure. But then I had to realize it was more of a culture thing. And, and the reason I realized that, because halfway through the evening, we were watching this Jesus film and you could feel in this building, it was getting full. You could, you could feel it in the air, and more really, you could smell it in the air, and you knew there was a lot of people crammed in here. And as I looked around, all you could see was a sea of faces, and, and people just glued to what was going on there. And not only in the building, but out the window to the one side, I remember, and out the back, you could just see people. And that was just amazing to see. They came in anticipation of what was going to happen. They heard that they were going to hear about the Lord. And, and it was just amazing to see that. But let's continue. Verse 3, it says, And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there was certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning within their hearts. Why did this man speak thus blasphemies? For who can forgive sins but God? And immediately, when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and take up thy bed and walk but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, he saith to the sick of the palsy. And I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, and took up his bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. This evening, as we see this passage of Scripture, there's three things I want to point out. I want you to see, number one, we need to keep the ministry focused on the Lord. I think you would agree with me this evening. We need to keep the ministry focused on the Lord. They were excited in, and in anticipation because he, the Lord, was in the house. See, this is not the first time Jesus was there. If you notice chapter 2, verse 1, it says, and again he entered. Back in chapter 1, you would understand that he came. Uh, there were some miracles done. He preached and he left. Now, chapter 2, he's coming again. But they came expecting him. And you can say, oh, sure, of course they were excited to see Jesus because of the miracles that he did. And, and yes, there were, and yes, he did. But there's another element to it as well. They were also excited because the miracles proved that he was who he claimed to be. You see, they knew there was a Messiah that would come. They've been praying for it, and they've been expecting and longing for a Savior. By the way, we see people are searching today, right? They know there's an emptiness in their heart and they're searching for a, to fill that void with something that they know not of. And we know we have the answer, don't we? It's such a blessing we have and something we cannot keep to ourselves. They were expecting and longing for a Savior. And these acts not only assisted those in need, but more so, I believe, cemented that Jesus Christ was who he claimed to be. Mark chapter 2, 12, as we see this passage, and I'm sorry, Mark chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, we can have a different we can have some different activities in church, but they need to be focused on bringing others to Christ. Prayer, message, and, and ministries are fantastic, but they need to be focused on bringing others to the Lord. We see here, his ministry was not about healing them physically, but rather bringing them to a place where they could have ears to hear the message. And again, keeping the ministry not focused, foc uh, keeping the ministry focused on the Lord and, and not the show. As he said in Mark uh, 138b, that I may preach there also, for therefore came I forth. Yes, 
at uh, the time the miracles were a part of it, but the focus was on the Lord. Number two, and this is a very small point, the minutia changes, the mission does not. The word minutia means the, the trivial things. Sometimes the trivial things, the things that don't really matter in a church can change, and that's okay. Careful with me as I go from here. When I first moved to Belize, it was the first time I was ever a pastor, and it was a big responsibility. I had to think, oh no, how am I going to do things? At church, at home, we understood that we, we sang a song, we prayed, and then before the end of the prayer, people would start standing up. They would say, because that's just what we got used to, right? Does it say in the Bible for the second song you need to stand up? It doesn't. But we get accustomed to things, don't we? And we have to be very careful that, that traditions do not come before the Word of God. We can change some small things in church. Maybe pastor says, friends, I would think maybe, I don't know, maybe if you have a soul winning afternoon on Sundays or somebody say, guess what? I would love for you to stick around and go soul winning. We're going to pass out tracks in the area and you might say, oh, this is new. Well, I don't know if we're allowed to do this. Some things are allowed to change. But of course, like we said, back to point number one, we need to keep the ministry focused on the word of God. Could you imagine the scene that happened in this church here? It's amazing when people start coming to church. Sometimes we get new people in church, right? And, and they don't act the way they're supposed to act. Maybe they don't dress the way they're supposed to dress or they're saying things, things come out of their mouth. And you say, oh, you can't say that in church. Okay, and we can get uncomfortable with these things. But could you imagine what happened in this passage of scripture? Could you imagine you're sitting here listening to the message and all of a sudden, Something starts falling from the ceiling. And you're like, knock it off. I'm trying to pay attention to the message here. And all of a sudden, more comes down. And, and all of a sudden, a man comes through the ceiling. How many would agree that would be a little distracting in church, right? But something was happening there, wasn't it? And it was because these men were serious about bringing others to the Lord. They were willing to do whatever they could to bring them to the Lord. They were willing to bring him through the roof to get him to Jesus. This would have been distracting for possibly somebody. We know the place was full, so there was somebody right under them. Could you imagine the homeowner thinking, what in the world? I am getting a new skylight. I never signed up for this, right? Sometimes uncomfortable things happen, and, and that can be okay, so long as they're not against Scripture. Number three here is just simply this. Bring others to Christ. That's what we see in this passage of Scripture. They knew the difference that Christ made in their lives. Not too long before this. And they were committed to see that change in their friends. They said, listen, can I just tell you what happened in my life? He needs the Lord and we're going to bring him to him any way we can. We have a task, a job a calling and a, and a privilege of bringing others to the Lord, will you do something about it? Because these four decided to go above and beyond, no, ton in, no pun intended here, obviously, but they, they, decided to, they intended to go above and beyond and bring their friend to the Lord because they were willing to do that, the friend was reached. They said, hey, our friend needs Jesus, and they did whatever they had to bring him to the Lord. They believed not, not that they could do it, that if they, but if they brought this one to Jesus, he could make them whole. And that's what happened in verse 5. I'm thankful for 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses, three through, uh, verses 6 through 9, that talk about the fact that we're in a partnership with the Lord, right? And that's such an encouragement to me as a Christian and as a minister of the gospel to know that God just calls me to be faithful, to serve him. And really, we understand he does the heavy lifting in this situation, right? He has called us to take the message to the world, and the Holy Spirit works in that life. And I'm so thankful and humbled by the privilege we have to be partnered to get a hold of that and be a part of it. We serve a mighty God. I think you understand that and why you're here this evening. Now, let me ask you, how can you get a hold of this bed that we're talking about here this evening? What can you do? How can you reach out and... Who can you reach out to? It's been several years since this passage of Scripture. We understand this, but not much has changed. People are still looking for miracles. Jesus did a few to prove who he was and, and, and prove that who he was who he said he was. 
But by the way, we obviously know we have the Bible. It's complete and the miracles ceased in such a way like that. But we can remember, I think you can remember possibly a time in your life when God did a work in you and transformed your life. And what a miracle that is. And that is our testimony. I am thankful that, okay, my life growing up was not perfect. There were things that happened and, and choices made and choices made that I had no control of that happened to me. But that's part of my testimony. And I can understand and I can share that with others where they might be in a world of hurt and they say, you don't understand, you're a Christian. You, you've always had a perfect life. Um, you know, it's easy for you and you can say, you know what, actually, I've been where you've been. I've struggled with this thing myself. Now, let me share with you from the Bible how God changed me. And we can share our testimony our, with them and, and, and change a life in that way. I'm so thankful for that. As we see here, it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, by the way, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And we can share that. That's our testimony. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. But don't just stop there. It continues to say, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And what's next? It says, and, give it, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. If you know the Lord is your personal savior, it is your privilege and opportunity to be a part of this, this, this reconciliation process and share the gospel with somebody else. It's not how much, like in this passage of scripture, it's not how much of the building do we have for God, but how much of God is in the building. It's not how talented we are, but are we willing to use those talents for the Lord? So let me ask you this evening, do we focus on God? Is our mind focused on Him? Do we expect God to show up in our circumstances when we bring others to Him by way of bringing them to church or, or sharing the gospel with them at work or wherever we are? Do we, do we bring others to God expecting God to work? I remember a missionary said this, and you've heard the quote before, we need to expect great things from God and attempt great things for God. I'm so thankful for that, and that's the goal of my life. So let me ask you this. Are we getting involved in this ministry of reconciliation? It doesn't matter where you are in the world. Yes, we are called to be missionaries in Belize, but that doesn't mean we don't do it here. Wherever we are in the world, we are to share the gospel with those around us. Bring them to a relationship with the Savior. We talked about this bed. We're talking about a piece, uh, piece of furniture here in this passage of Scripture where people got involved with bringing a friend to the Lord. Now, let me ask you, with this fact, with this topic of worldwide missions, being the missionary is one. We talk about, let's say, four corners of this bed. Most beds have four corners. I've seen some different ones, but, but this is four corners of this bed. And the first one would be maybe being a missionary yourself. Have you ever thought about that? I'm looking forward to getting to know you over the next week. And, and like I said, I love you to ask me questions. And, and during part of this week, I'll get to share my testimony and, and how the Lord changed and worked in my life and how he took us to Belize. But have you ever thought about that in your own life? Maybe God is working in your heart about being a missionary preaching the gospel, sharing the gospel somewhere else in the world. You know, he can do that in you. It's not impossible. God can work in your life. Now, I would, I would hope that if you are, say, maybe God's working in my life, that you're doing that here, that you're involved in evangelism here and sharing the gospel with your friends. But that's one, one, just one corner of the bed, one part of reaching the world with the gospel of you being a missionary yourself. Maybe God's been working in your heart about that. Secondly, there's giving. My friend, the needs are not getting less. We understand that, don't we? I have three kids and they won't stop eating no matter what I do. That gets, that gets more expensive. Did you know in Belize, the price of gas costs more than it does in Vancouver? It's crazy. Costs get expensive. And, and we understand that in our lives. And if we're going to reach the world with the gospel, there is a cost to that. And there's a giving aspect to it. And we understand that here. And thank you, by the way, for your support and what you've been doing so far for world evangelism in that area. But let me ask you, what about prayer? The corner of the bed of prayer. When was the last time you prayed for those 
in the work. Prayed for, for missionaries. I see several that you support around here, and that is fantastic, and you see the faces and where they're going to. But when was the last time you maybe walked by and just prayed for them? You don't know all the specific details, but we know the Lord does. And we know we can reach out in prayer for them. Because lastly, there's that corner of encouragement. As a missionary, it is so humbling and so encouraging to hear that people are praying for me. Or maybe they just write a note of encouragement. Pastor Dan, I, or Brother Dan, or whatever you call a missionary, Mr. Dinsmore, I just want to let you know I'm praying for you. I thought about you this week, and I just, I hope you're doing okay. That is so needed. Thank you, Brother Adams, for your testimony and your ministry. That's a blessing to us. But we need to think about encouraging one another and encouraging each other in the Lord in this area. Now, maybe you're thinking, okay, you, you listed four areas, that of being a missionary ourselves, uh, 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 giving to the ministry, praying and encouraging, that's fine. Here's the deal. I'll do one of them. Praise the Lord. I'm thankful for that. We, we need you to do that one. But we're not required to just do one, are we? We need to get involved in, in all areas of this bed. Maybe you'll say, okay, I'll do this one thing, but not the bottom. I think of this man here. Could you imagine these friends getting a hold of this man and say, if he was somebody like me, if I was on the bed, they might say, you know what? I'm not touching his feet. I'll, I'll grab the head of the bed, but I'm not touching that guy's feet. Um, that's, I'm not touching that over there. No, I will give. I will, I will be a witness myself, but I'm not doing those other things. Do you think they did that? Not at all. Their friend needed the Lord. And they were going to do whatever they could to get involved. And all these areas are so vital in the gospel, and in missions. The fact of the matter is, all four of these, these corners of the bed are, are vitally important, and we need to be growing in these areas. So, Grace Baptist Church, let me ask you this question this evening. Will you strengthen your grip on this bed? In all these different areas of missions, we need to be growing in these areas. Let me tell you, we serve a mighty God, and He is able and he's able to use us what will we do could you imagine this evening if it was your friend on that stretcher and somebody said you know what i'm not called to that i'm not going to do that we understand that god loves us and what he's done in our lives but so often maybe we forget that god loves and has already died for them as well we have a job to do we need to get behind this, this thing of missions. It's somebody's relative, and Jesus has already proved his love for them. Will you this evening be willing to allow God to use you in every area of your life? He wants to use you. Are you willing this evening? Pastor. Thank you for watching the message today. We invite you to join us again every Sunday and Wednesday for more inspiring messages from God's Word.